and I love this place. The problem is we don't take the time to experience all that it has to offer. So if I land in the water, does this thing float? Tastes that varietal characteristic in the coffee. Oh yeah. <laughs> my name is Noah. Come with me and let's explore a little bit of my hometown of San Diego. cheeseburgers. I love cheeseburgers. Of course I love chicken, pasta, salad, and the rest of the health food pyramid, but there's nothing like a big fat juicy artery clogging cheeseburger. Obviously my passion for the cheeseburger is by far unique. It seems folks have been enjoying burgers for a while now. In fact they become an American institution. Juicy broiled hamburgers with just the right touch of charcoal flavor from the fire have become an American institution. See what I tell you. I think I'm more impressed by the salt and pepper shakers. Those were cool. Just the elegant aroma of that ground beef picking up added flavor from the fire is enough to give everybody the firm idea that it's time to eat. The firm idea? It's cool. I like watching old movies. Things were just different back then. Kids would congregate down at the local malt shop, hang out and talk, and dance right there in the middle of the malt shop. Imagine that. I wish there were still places like that. The funny thing, all the high schoolers looked like they were at least 30. Things have definitely changed. My mom had told me about a great malt shop that was around in San Diego when she was a kid, called Oscars. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist today, but I was always curious about Oscars and some of the other early burger joints that started in San Diego. So to find out more information, and maybe dig up a picture or two, I headed on over to the San Diego Historical Society, which is located in beautiful Balboa Park. Upstairs, the Historical Society has an incredible museum where you can experience San Diego's past. What a lot of people don't know is downstairs, the Historical Society has an amazing research library, which is open to the public, and it's also where I met the Society's Director of Photo Archives, Chris Travers. Hi, Noah. Hi, Welcome Holly. to the research library at the San Diego Historical Society. Thank you. I'd like to share with you today our photograph archives. We have two and a half million images of San Diego from 1869 to the present. Wow. It's documenting everything from the development of San Diego from the very beginning to, to what happens right now. Downtown. Okay. We also have an amazing object collection. We have 20,000 objects, and those are things like costumes, shoes, we have just painting, sculpture, artwork. We also have a beautiful document archive that has 45 million paper objects. Wow. And it includes uh, maps, drawings, books, manuscript collections, oral histories. It's everything about San Diego. Didn't I tell you this place was amazing? Seriously, 2.5 million photos of San Diego? Well, they're bound to have one or two of Oscars. I heard there was a place called Oscars, and my parents used to go there back in the day, so I'm looking for photos of that. Sure. The way we have our photos arranged is by subject here, okay. starting alphabetically with A and working its way to Z. So restaurants are under businesses, restaurants right here. Okay. And then you pretty much just come to the book that you want and look through the photos that we have. In this book, which is Businesses, Restaurants, we can just go alphabetically to Oscars ah, Restaurant. look at that. So we have a number of images of Oscars there through it is. different Oscars locations, actually. We have um, one on Pacific Highway at Elm here, okay. and the, this one here, I believe, is at Rosecrans oh. at Jefferson. Um, they're really cool shots. And restaurants, old restaurants, get a lot of interest with people who come oh, in. Really? And they, yeah, they want them to decorate the walls of their house. Or often businesses come in and look for pictures of either their old business or a similar business so that they can decorate their restaurant walls, too. Okay, look at that. 25 cents double-deck hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, interesting, too, to have the pictures of the people who used to serve the, you know, the hamburgers. Mm -hmm. They'd often be um, on oh, wheels. Look at that. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's say that I want this photo right here of Oscars. How do I get this photo? Well, normally the way it happens is you would come in and fill out an order form. We would scan this picture from the negative, from mm -hmm. the original, and we would upload it to our website, and then you would go there and place your order and pay at that time. Oh, that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. It was great. Not only did they have one-of-a-kind pictures of Oscars, they had some cool film, too. I love the roller skates. Although you can buy just about any photo you want here, the Society's mission is much bigger than that. Part of our mission is to preserve history. It's not really to sell photographs. So when we get a collection in, we get a donation, we tend to number it and we catalog it and mm. we house it properly in archival sleeves and archival wow. folders okay. so that we can prolong the life of every picture and every negative. So these are all originals? These are original prints, they're called, meaning at the time they were given to us, we did not have another version of them. We hadn't made a negative, and no one had given us a negative. So after um, we sort them out and we catalog them, if we found the image was really interesting, we would go back and make a negative of that print. When it comes to the preservation process, they don't mess around. So this is our cold room. This is a climate controlled vault where we store all of our negatives and film. Okay. It, the, the temperature's um, controlled and so is the humidity so that the negatives are preserved longer. Uh, okay, it's a little chilly in here, it's huh? It's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love history. I could have hung out here all day. Before I left, archivist Jane Keneally and I checked out a bunch of beautiful maps they have here and even some ephemera? Um, well, this is from our extensive collection of ephemera. Uh, ephemera? ephemera? Yep, okay. ephemera is material that is basically made for a specific purpose and with a view to discarding it. It's things like brochures, tickets, uh, flyers, okay. programs, menus like this. Okay. Um, and this one is from Anthony's. As you can Anthony's, see, yeah, yeah. and absolutely. the prices don't look like that today. <laughs> oh, let's see, crab, a dollar twenty-five. <laughs> oh, lobster, a buck seventy-five. That's oh, you could have, yeah, you can have. Uh, that's the small one. Oh, <laughs> get a large one for two bucks. Yeah. So check this out. Just as I was getting into the ephemera, director of collections Tori Craner rolled out this original Jack Clown costume head, donated by Jack in the Box. Pretty cool, and it reminded me why I was originally here cheeseburger history, right? Well, come to find out, Oscars was owned by a gentleman named Robert Oscar Peterson, who is believed to be the entrepreneur who first paired the drive through window with an intercom system. So cool. I'm getting chills because I love stories like this. Peterson, born and raised right here in San Diego, decides to open a chain of burger drive throughs in the 1940s called Topsies. They offer car hop service and, of course, a drive through window. Well, eventually, by the late 40s, Peterson renames Topsy's Oscars after his middle name and developed the circus-like decor. Then, in 1951, Peterson opens a similar hamburger restaurant, but this one, he puts a giant clown head on top of the building and names it Jack in the Box. Now, Jack in the Box doesn't have car hops, but instead, Peterson introduces a two-way intercom system, allowing the customer to talk to the people inside for speedier service. The man is pure genius. Well, I was so fired up, I left the Historical Society and headed straight to the Jack in the Box headquarters, which is still located right here in San Diego. Inside, I met Division VP Brian Luscombe, who told me a little more about the company. Jack in the Box was founded here in San Diego back in 1951. In fact, we've been in this building, the same building we're in right now, since 1963. Wow. And in this building, at uh, one time for about 30 years, they actually manufactured all of the French fries, the onion rings, the tacos that we sold in our restaurants. Really? Right here? I never knew. So you guys actually made the stuff right here? Yep. And then back in 1982, we closed our commissary and our manufacturing facilities and converted that space to offices. You know, a lot of people wonder, how did Jack in the Box get its name? Sure. Well, back in 1951, when the founder of Jack in the Box, Robert Peterson, and his designer visited the very first restaurant on El Cajon Boulevard, mm -hmm. there was a large exhaust fan, a big box, sitting on the very top of the, of the restaurant and it was rather unsightly. They didn't know what to do with it. They couldn't conceal it, so they decided, decided to convert it into a giant jack-in-the-box toy, and mm -hmm. the name of the restaurant was born. Again, genius. Over the years, Jack in the Box has done an incredible job of marketing and promoting through funny commercials, toys, and antenna balls.
1995, uh, we resurrected the Antenna Ball pr promotion. Sure. So uh, we've got 